I have been working with Spring Boot for creating cloud native and microservices applications for deploying into different cloud providers. There are a lot of challenges with respect to deploying Spring Boot applications in adopting to the latest cloud computing models. The most prominent ones are the memory footprint and the startup time. With the introduction of frameworks like Micronaut and Microprofile, the Java process is getting lightweight and faster. Quarkus is a similar kind of a framework created by Red Hat by leveraging the ahead of time compilation. Let's see how is it different from Micronaut. This is the first time I am trying Quarkus. Let's see how we can get started and progressively we will explore different capabilities and then compare them in the coming weeks. I know a lot of you have been requesting me to make a video on Quarkus for a long time now. If you're not aware about what is Quarkus, you can head to Quarkus.io. In short, Quarkus is an open source framework which can be useful for creating Kubernetes native Java stack which is optimized for the OpenJTK and the GraalVM runtime. Similar to Spring Boot, this is just a combination of different Java libraries and the standards providing you a consolidation along with improvements on the JVM. Quarkus is majorly designed for containers because you need to have the containers lightweight when you want to spawn these containers every now and then and then use them to scale applications much faster than before. This is just a stat on how the memory is different from how you can run Quarkus in the JVM versus the GraalVM world and with the traditional cloud native stack. I'm not going to go through the statistics now. We will try to create an application and then we will try to see from there in our usual style. Quarkus supports imperative and reactive which basically means it can be used for synchronous operations and asynchronous operations as well. Quarkus also provides live reload support so you don't have to rerun your application when you change something in your application to test it. This is something which everyone provides by default out of the box so there is nothing big there. The other thing is um, there are a lot of different libraries and their integrations and standards which are integrated into Quarkus. So Quarkus has been there for a while. I did not try Quarkus until it went GA last month. I think right now the version of Quarkus is 1.1.1. So the moment you hit the start coding option, it gives you a familiar UI, which is similar to the start.spring.io, which we have always been using. I'm going to create an application here called uh, code with Quarkus. So I'll just say the group ID is com tech primers. Quarkus. This is similar to the start.spring.io, the spring initializer, just that it has a different UI, there are different frameworks, you can go and check, you can search here and things like that. I'll be using the artifact name as code with Quarkus which is the default one which gave me. The next option is the build tool, I'm going to use Maven, you can also use Gradle but Gradle is not GA yet. So I'm going to use Maven and the dependencies which I'm going to use are so if you had created Spring Boot applications, you by default use Spring Web for creating REST controllers and then exposing these APIs from the application. Here, we are going to use the JAX RS. So Quarkus doesn't bring its own implementation of a JSR standard. Instead, it's bringing in the whole JSR standard, the JAX RS implementation from the Java library itself. So it doesn't create uh, overlap over the existing JAX RS like how Spring does. So Spring has its own Spring MVC, it has its own annotations and things like that. Quarkus doesn't have anything on its own. It provides native integration with the Java library which is what I liked because you don't have to learn something new when you start with Quarkus. So by default uh, JAX RS is included so I'm going to use that. There are different cloud native deployment specific dependencies as well. For example if you go to the cloud section, you have integrations with the Lambda, the Kubernetes, Azure functions and the Kubernetes client, etc. I'm going to use the Kubernetes option just to see what does it provide. I'm not going to deploy this into Kubernetes now. We'll try to run it locally since this is the first video we are getting to know what is Quarkus and things like that. But I'm just going to integrate this dependency called Kubernetes and then see what does it provide additionally compared to a Spring Boot project or a Micronaut project. So I'm going to hit on the generate your application option. 
this is going to generate my zip file i'll download the zip file open it in intellij so the project is open in intellij let me go and see what are the different files it has generated like a classic um, spring boot project it has created a palm file readme the maven wrapper there is a docker ignore file if you notice since i selected the kubernetes option it knows that it needs a docker build so it has created a docker ignore file as well and it has created some docker files as well so by default it's using the fabric 8 plugin to build uh, the docker images fabric 8 is another open source plugin by red hat so it has two different docker files one is the jvm specific one and the other one is the native graal image apart from that we have the java code here com tech members quarkus there is an example resource if you notice there is no main class here which is surprising right if you compare it with a spring boot or a micronaut application you usually have a main class so here there is no main class i believe that is going to be generated by quarkus when we do compilation because Quarkus runs on ahead of time compilation methodology. So it creates codes, it creates byte codes and then injects stuff during the compilation time. So I have an endpoint called hello, which is called as an example resource. Then I have Docker files. Uh, apart from that, I think we don't need anything else. There is an application properties, but then nothing is there. There is a default index HTML. I think when we hit the local rest endpoint, it is just going to show us some details. So we will take a look at that. So in order to run this project, I am going to do a maven clean i'm not going to do anything fancy first we'll just try to uh, get an understanding of how things work in quarkus then we can deep dive and then compare other frameworks so in order to compile you can just say maven compile it does that but quarkus dev is a command which will help you in live reloading so if you had seen my videos on scaffold and then spring boot dev tools and micronaut live reloading has become a new standard in developing applications in our laptop so if i'm running an application i don't want to stop and rerun it every time re rebuild it every time so for example here i have the quarkus package built and then it is running now i can use the curl command to hit the local host 8080 because it's running on 8080 by default so it's giving some html page we had an endpoint called hello so i'm just going to hit the hello and i can see that there is a hello response so just to check how the live reloading option works what we can do is we can change this to hello youtube just to get a feel of what's happening now i can hit the curl and you can see that the live reload happens in the background we got the hello youtube immediately so if you notice here it is internally using the vertex framework so quarkus is not building it on its own but it has a vertex framework integration it's doing all those thread related stuff now to check the memory footprint i'm going to use the j console so quarkus in their uh, website have claimed that the memory footprint is low and things like that let's see if it really justifies that so they are saying the memory footprint is 12 mb um, when you're running only with the rest we don't have any crud operation so we have only the rest operation so we'll see how much memory does it take so i've just hit the j console option uh, j console is the java monitoring and the console dashboard or the management dashboard you can use it to connect to different JVM locally. So I am uh, running the JVM called uh, code with Quarkus dev. So that's what I'm running, right? So I can connect to this from J console. So the moment I connect my J console with the Quarkus JVM, it can snoop in to the JVM and then get me stats on what is the memory footprint, how are the threads, how are the classes getting loaded, what is the heap size and things like that. Let me click on the memory option. This shows the heap memory right now i think it is showing as what uh 70 80 member 80 mb is getting used let's go to the thread there are like i think 150 thread there are like almost 7000 plus classes loaded if i go to vm summary and beans i think it has different options right right now it says the memory used is like 86 mb what we can do is we can do some more changes and then see what's happening so I'm going to revert this change back and uh, let's see what happens if I revert this change and I'm going to hit the curl again. Okay, no, not the J console. I'm going to hit the curl again. So the moment I hit the curl again, I will get a response. Let me close the J console again. So you can see that the memory footprint increases and decreases because there is garbage collection happening and stuff like that. 
so memory footprint is not getting exceeded more than 90 mb this is because we are having the live reload option so if you uh, see if i stop the live reload our uh, jvm should get disconnected let me do a uh, i would want to reconnect instead i would do a java jar to get a feel of how it really runs right how much memory does it take because when i run it from the compile option it has the jvm and the intellij connected and then it is doing a live reload and things like that so it might require more memory in that particular case but if i run it as a normal application let's see how much does that take so in order to create a package i'll do a maven package i'll do a clean just to make sure things are clean so maven package is going to create the jars for me so the build is completed now we can run our jar java jar and then the jar is going to be in target and it's going to be with code it has something called hyphen runner so similar to how spring boot has hyphen original uh, quarkus has hyphen runner nothing different so this is going to be the fat jar which has all the dependencies in this for this particular project so the application is up now i can check by reconnecting i think the process would have got changed what we can do is we can close this get to a new connection so i can connect to the new process which we started let's connect and see how much memory this guy takes so previously when we ran it using the live reload option it was using 80 mb now we can check how much memory this guy is taking so it's almost 50 mb right so that's what i can see now i can go and hit my curl i can see that it's going till 70 mb i mean there are like more or less 10 mb difference but then once you're done with it if you notice the memory comes down to 10 mb right after the garbage collection happens the memory shoots down to 10 mb let me hit again and again just to make sure we are creating some artificial traffic yeah so the memory is almost there at 10 mb comparatively it is better than what we have seen with spring boot if you're creating a spring boot project it, it comes to more than 150 mb or 200 mb plus minimum if you're just having a vanilla spring boot with the rest implementation so comparatively quackus seems to be better with respect to the memory footprint and the compilation takes a while because it does ahead of time compilation similar to what micronaut does so micronaut was a project which started in 2017 and Quarkus was started in 2018 so Micronaut has a one year lead time but then Quarkus was created with Kubernetes in mind right so Red Hat has tight integrations with their OpenShift platform with Kubernetes so they created Quarkus to create cloud native applications in the JVM I believe this is enough for us to get started to get an understanding of what Quarkus is and how is it different from other frameworks but internally everything is almost similar Quarkus integrates with the Java libraries. It just brings in the existing libraries and then you can have seamless integration. The startup time is faster and the memory footprint is low. So which gives us in exploring Quarkus on the serverless front as well. I hope you found this particular video interesting. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.